Hello everyone, my name is John Amin and I'm a community pharmacist volunteering at Paracetamol. I will be presenting the first chapter in the first series of courses given by Paracetamol Academy about medicinal chemistry. Chapter 1 will be about drug discovery and relationship between functional groups and pharmacological activity. First of all, what is medicinal chemistry? Medicinal chemistry is the science of discovery, design, and development of new, biologically active compounds, safe and suitable to be produced for the prevention, treatment, and cure of human and animal diseases. It's an interdisciplinary science at the intersection of organic chemistry, biochemistry, computational chemistry, pharmacology, pharmacognosy, molecular biology, and many more. It also includes the study of marketed drugs, their biological properties, and their structure-activity relationships. What is a drug? A drug is any substance other than food that is used to prevent, diagnose, treat, or relieve symptoms of a disease or abnormal condition. Drugs can also affect how the brain and the rest of the body works, and cause changes in mood, awareness, thoughts, feelings, or behavior. The activity of a drug is its pharmacological effect on the subject, for example, its analgesic or beta-blocker action. Drugs can act by producing chemical reactions that interfere with biological processes, which can be either beneficial or non-beneficial effects. So no drug is completely safe. All drugs can act as poison if taken in excess. For example, overdoses of paracetamol can cause liver failure, and aspirin, which is commonly used to alleviate headaches, may also cause gastric irritation and bleeding. So the real challenge here would be to find the drug with the desired effect and the least side effects. Drugs are classified in a number of different ways depending on where and how the drugs are being used. The methods of most interest to medicinal chemists are chemical structure and pharmacological action, which includes the site of action and target system. Unfortunately, classifying drugs according to their chemical structure has the disadvantage that members of the same structural group often exhibit very different types of pharmacological activity. Steroids, for example, may act as hormones, such as the testosterone, diuretics, such as the spironolactone molecule, and antibacterial agents, such as the fasidic acid, amongst other forms of activity. The process of drug discovery begins with the identification of new, previously undiscovered biologically active compounds, often called HITS, which are typically found by screening many compounds for the desired biological properties. We will next explore the various approaches used to identify HITS and to convert these HITS into lead compounds, and subsequently into drug candidates suitable for clinical trials. Today, many discoveries start with biological testing of the potential sources for drugs in order to determine the nature of their pharmacological activity as well as their potencies. These screening programs may be random or focused. In random screening programs, all the substances and compounds available are tested, regardless of their structures. Random screening is still employed, but the use of more focused screening procedures where specific structural types are tested is now more common. Once a screening program has identified substances of pharmacological activity of interest, the compound responsible for this activity is isolated and used as a lead compound for the production of related analogs. These compounds are subjected to further screening tests. Analogs are made of the most promising of these compounds and they in turn are subjected to the screening procedure. This sequence of selective screening and synthesis of analogs may be repeated many times before a potentially useful drug is found. Often the sequence has to be abandoned as being either unproductive or too expensive. Let's explore some terms that we will be using further on. What is a lead compound? A lead compound is a chemical compound of biological activity that shows promise as a treatment for a disease and the development of a new drug. Compounds with similar structures to a pharmacologically active drug are often themselves biologically active. This activity may be either similar to that of the original compound, but different in potency and unwanted side effects, or completely different to that exhibited by the original compound. These structurally related activities are commonly referred to as structure-activity relationships. A study of the structure-activity relationships of elite compound and its analogs 
may be used to determine the parts of the structure of the lead compound that are responsible for both its beneficial biological activity, that is, its pharmacophore, and also its unwanted side effects. This information may be used to develop a new drug that has increased activity, a different activity from an existing drug, and fewer unwanted side effects. Structure activity relationships are usually determined by making minor changes to improve potency, selectivity, and pharmacokinetics to the structure of a lead to produce analogs and assessing the effect these structural changes have on biological activity. For example, morphine, which is a lead compound and also a powerful analgesic, and its analog, codeine, which is an antitussid. The aromatic ring A and its 3-hydroxy is an important structural feature for analgesic activity. This figure illustrates how simplified synthetic copies of the cocaine molecule were designed. They changed from cocaine to procaine, retains the local anesthetic effects without the narcotic properties. Benzocaine, procaine, and lidocaine all can be considered structural analogues of cocaine. A classic example of how structural modification of a natural product can lead to useful therapeutic agents. Another example is that of acetylcholine and its analogues. The paradox that resulted after the discovery of acetylcholine, how one chemical group can produce two different biological effects, muscle relaxation and muscle contraction, was explained using the actions of acetylcholine and tubocurarine as examples. Both molecules act at the same receptor, but that one molecule, the acetylcholine, fits to the receptor in a more complementary manner and activates it, causing muscle contraction. The blocking effect of the larger molecule, tubocurarine, could be explained by its occupation of part of the receptor, thereby preventing acetylcholine, the smaller molecule, from interacting with the receptor. With both molecules, the quaternary ammonium functional group is a common structural feature and interacts with the same region of the receptor. If one closely examines the structures of other molecules with opposing effects on the same pharmacological system, this appears to be a common theme. For example, compounds that are muscle relaxants that act via the cholinergic nervous system possess a quaternary ammonium or protonated tertiary ammonium, ammonium group and are larger than acetylcholine. The changes from lead compound to one of the analogues may be conveniently classified as changing the size and shape of the carbon skeleton. For example, chlorpromazine acts by blocking dopamine receptors, and while changing the size of one ring to get clomipramine, acts by inhibiting serotonin reuptake. Secondly, the nature and degree of substitution. Adding an aromatic ring to benzyl penicillin gives it the property to be beta-lactamase resistant. And finally, the stereochemistry of the lead. It is now well established that the shape of a molecule is normally one of the most important factors affecting drug activity. Consequently, the overall shape of the structure of a molecule is an important consideration when designing an analog. Some structural features impose a considerable degree of rigidity on a structure, whilst others make the structure more flexible. Other structures give rise to stereoisomers, which can exhibit different potencies, types of activity, and unwanted side effects. For example, thalidomide exists in two mirror image forms. It is a racemic mixture of R and S enantiomers. The R enantiomer shown in the figure has sedative effects, whereas the S isomer is teratogenic. Under biological conditions, the isomers interconvert, so separating the isomers before use is ineffective. What are the sources of drugs and lead compounds? Natural sources are still important sources of lead compounds and new drugs. In the past, this has led to the discovery of many important therapeutic agents. For example, the antimalarial quinine from cinchona bark and the cardiac stimulant digitalis from a plant called foxgloves. There's a large diversity of natural products, so it's rather a hit or miss process. Once screening identifies a material containing an active compound, the problem becomes one of extraction, purification, and assessment of the pharmacological activity.
But what are the disadvantages with natural product screening? The mixtures are often very complex. Isolation of an active component is difficult, and an isolation of useful quantities of this active component has ecological problems. Chemical structure determination is often difficult, and structures are often complex and very difficult to synthesize and identify the pharmacophore. Another source of potential drugs and lead compounds is by drug synthesis. The most popular approach to drug design by synthesis is to start with the pathology of the diseased state and determine the point where intervention is most likely to be effective. This enables the medicinal chemist to suggest possible lead compounds. These compounds are synthesized so that their pharmacological action may be evaluated. Once a suitably active lead is found, structural analogues of that lead are produced and screened in the hope that this procedure will eventually produce a compound that is suitable for clinical use. And finally, we have market forces or Me2 drugs. We define a Me2 drug as a pharmacologically active compound that is structurally related to a first in-class compound, regarded as belonging to the same therapeutic class as the original compound and used for the same therapeutic purposes, but which may differ in some respects, such as specificity of pharmacological action adverse reactions profile, and drug-drug interactions. The cost of introducing a new drug to the market is extremely high and continues to escalate. One has to be very sure that a new drug is going to be profitable before it is placed on the market. Reasons for developing such drugs would be to improve specificity at the target, thus reducing the risks of off-target adverse reactions and drug-drug interactions. Atypical antipsychotics, such as the risperidone, have lower affinity and occupancy for the dopaminergic receptors than the typical antipsychotics such as the haloperidol and the high degree of occupancy of the serotoninergic receptors 5-HT2A. Second of all, to reduce the risks of off-target adverse reactions and drug-drug interactions without altering on-target specificity, such as the simvastatin molecule, which is metabolized by the same enzyme that is inhibited by ingesting grapefruit juice, and rosuvastatin, which is metabolized by another enzyme. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to subscribe for more educational videos.